Hey everybody, Miss Dietrich here. We're looking at question number one. A sports store had a 60% off sale. Justin bought a pair of sneakers that were on sale for $22.40. What was the original price of the sneakers? In class, we've been talking a lot about the use of these double tape diagrams to organize our thinking. I think in this case, it would be a good idea to go ahead and start plotting some numbers on the double tape diagram so we know what we're doing. In the percent world, Whenever we have all of something, we're talking about 100%. So let's look at the percent and read it carefully and figure out what exactly is that. If we look here, it says 60% off. Now remember, off means how much you're not paying, not how much you're paying. So that means that's the discount. Let's put that, let's map it out on our double tape diagram. That would be a little more than half. 60% off. Now, by the way, not that they asked for it, but if we need this number right here, because in class we've been talking a lot about really completing the entire tape diagram to really wrap your brain around it, this would be the percent that you would be paying. Percent paying, or would end up being the sale price. All right, so let's look again at the other number that's given and see if we can figure out where does that go for the money, because the bottom bar is going to be talking about money. Is the number that's in the problem, is it the discount, is it the sale price, or is it the full price of the sneakers? Let's try to figure out by reading it again. Justin bought a pair of sneakers that were on sale for $22.40. So if that was the sale, right, sale price, then that means we're going to put it right here, $22.40. And we want to know the all of it number. This is the thing that we don't know. What was the original price? Original price regular price and full price mean the same thing. So that's the number we're looking for. Now, I, I want to remind you all that when we don't have the all of it number, which we don't, then you have to use proportions. So how do you even know where to begin? Let's answer that question for you. Whenever we uh, use proportions, I always like to get in the habit of putting the equal sign in the two fraction bars, and I like to get into the habit of labeling parts and wholes. Now, when we go to our tape diagram and figure out which chunk do we have all the information, is it the red chunk, the green chunk, or the blue chunk, we have all the information for the green chunk. So that's how we know how to start this thing. This means 40 out of 100. So we have to make that a ratio on either the left side or the right side. We've been in the routine and putting it on the left side, so let's do that. 40% means 40 out of 100. That's the part. 40 is the part. The all of it or the whole is 100. Now we have to decide where does this $22.40 go? Is that the part, therefore we'll put it on the top? Or is it the whole or the all of it, and therefore we're going to put it on the bottom? Well, it's the part, right? Because we don't know the whole. We're going to put this number as the part. So let's throw that number right here. And we're looking for the whole or the full price. Now my recommendation to get this to be a little more user friendly, let's simplify this ratio on the left. We can start by getting rid of the zeros, so that's essentially dividing by 10, and then we can further reduce it, just to make the numbers a little more user friendly, we can further reduce it by dividing by two. Now, if you like the four tenths, just because some people like to use 10 in their computation, that's perfectly acceptable too, but let's explore the idea of com completely simplifying it, and if we do that, divide by two and get two, divide by two and get five. So our ratio there is a two to five ratio. Now, if we're going to use cross products, which is what I recommend in this case, let's take a look at what that would look like. So one of the cross products would be 2 times W. Let's write that down. Our other cross product would be, let's use blue, would be this times this, 5 times 2240. 5 times 2240, which, by the way, is the same thing as 22.4. So in the interest of pressing fewer buttons on the calculator, I'm going to put it as that. But feel free, if you want to add that zero, that's perfectly fine too. All right, let's take out the trusty calculator because our next step here is to simplify this. We're simplifying 5, 5 times 22.4. 5 times 22.4. And we get this number, 112. And let's bring down the 2w. All right, so what's next? We have to ask ourselves, what, 
where's the variable? What's happening to it? It's being multiplied with two. And we have to ask ourselves whenever we're solving an equation, what's the opposite of multiply by two? And that would be to divide by two. We're gonna do that on both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. So this all cancels out. We're gonna bring down the W. So the only thing left you have to do <coughs> is to take this number and divide it by this number, and that will be your answer. Now I do recommend putting it in the tape diagram to make sure that it seems reasonable because of course this number, if it's the all of a number, should be more than the part. So if you came up with something you know, that's less, which we have a few choices in here that are, see this number here is actually less. So you know it's not gonna be A, right? Hope you all realize that. So finish up and uh, good luck finishing this and hopefully you'll get the right answer.